an old shipyard down on the Clyde. On a cold winter's morning, I was launched onto the sea. In my 28 years, I've traveled far and wide. Seen a lot of towns and bumped a lot of piers. My name is Waverly, last paddleship to sail the sea. There's only one of me, the good ship Waverly. The paddle steamer Waverly has earned a place in the folklore of the River Clyde. She spent her life chugging up and down from the industrial heart of Glasgow to the towns and holiday resorts on the mouth of the river. Today the Waverly is a very special boat. Once dozens of steamers like her ran on regular passenger services and she's the last of the line. She's the only ocean-going paddle steamer still operating anywhere in the world. And she's special for another reason. The love people have for this boat has just saved her from the breaker's yard. Eighteen months ago, it seems she'd made her final voyage. The Waverley was losing money, and her owners took her out of service. She was towed down the river to lie in dry dock, and that seemed to be the end of paddle steamers on the Clyde for good. Well, today, the Waverley is back in business because these people fought a determined battle to save her. They're members of the Paddle Steamer Preservation Society, and they needed the Waverley because she was the only steamer left. They bought her lock, stock and barrel for a pound. The shipping company gave up the scrap value for it wanted her to survive as well. Then for over 12 months, society members embarked on a gigantic do-it-yourself operation to renovate the boat. They badgered institutions, charities, local councils and the general public for money to pay for major repairs and they raised 60,000 pounds. The aim was to run the boat again on cruises down the Clyde. Gradually, the Waverley was brought back to life, and the society discovered that she lay deep in the hearts of the public, and not only on Clyde's side either. Many local authorities have contributed, but the contributions from the public sector have come from all over the world. Every corner of the globe, it's been quite staggering. My name is Waverley, last paddle ship to sail the sea. There's only one of me. Good ship, Waverly. Today the Waverly is steaming down the Clyde again. She's just made her maiden voyage as property of the Preservation Society, who hoped to make her viable on cruises instead of scheduled services. So far she's been packed with people, for the Waverly is not only a pleasure boat. The fact that the Waverley is the last ocean-going paddle steamer still going to sea anywhere in the world would have been reason enough for people to want to save her. But much more important than that is what she represents to the folk who live on the banks of the River Clyde. She's the sole survivor of a vanishing way of life, and that's why she's so deeply ingrained in their hearts. It's a way of life that started a hundred years ago. Sailing up the Clyde, sailing up the Clyde, Going Dune the Water, as they called it, to holiday resorts like Rothsey and Danoon on the mouth of the river became a tradition on Clydeside. For working folk, it was their only escape from the grime of industrial Glasgow. For Pa, Ma and the Waynes, getting to their holiday on a paddle steamer was half the fun. There can be few Clydesiders born before the 1950s when trade began to decline who haven't been on a steamer and can remember the thrill as children of their first journey down the river into the beauty of the Scottish countryside. In my day, all children went down the water for their holidays. And uh, so you, you, you got to, not only to know the boats, but to get a special affection for some. Because if you went your holidays, we'll say you crossed over to the island of Arden, then you sometimes specially arranged to travel on one steamer because that was your favourite steamer. Before they left, a Ma would put a half sovereign under a vase in, in the room. They lived usually in a room in the kitchen, sometime in what was called a single end, which was just one room. But she'd hide a half sovereign under the vase because Glasgow people are the original big spenders and they spend all their money when they go on holiday. So that when they got back, Poor old Paul had not a penny. 
and more would then extract this half sovereign and have enough to pay for a, a, a week before he got his next pay. I can still remember the days of a peer racing when four steamers would race for a pier because the one that got there first was going to get the most customers. And sometimes the boilers burst, uh, there was one captain got the sack, uh, and sometimes people were actually killed. Uh, but that didn't make any difference to the passengers. They wanted to be on the steamer that got to the pier first. Then there'd come a time when Paul would decide he had to see the engines. Yeah. Well, that really it was a euphemism. He was going down to have a drink. The bar was very close to the engine room. But the engine room was open and you could actually see the engines, yeah. the paddle engines working. But it was a good excuse to get that for a drink. Uh, yes. Um, and, uh, without the missus knowing. The Waverley is a classless boat. Working people and millionaires rub shoulders and explore again the boat they knew as children. The same engines, restored and running like a dream, offer a unique sight anywhere in the world and afterwards it's just like it's always been. There's high tea in the saloon and a dram to wash it down. The members of the Preservation Society, it's like a dream come true to have a steamer of their very own. And they work for nothing alongside the experienced seamen they now employ to keep the boat in service. For them, and men like 86-year-old Mr Murdoch, the loss of the Waverley would not only have been the end of a tradition, it would have finished off one of their main interests in life. Through the years, he's watched sadly as all the steamers have gone for scrap, and he's loved the boat so dearly that he's actually got part of one at home. Resting in state in a Glasgow garden is what's left of the Iona, on which Mr Murdoch went down the Clyde as a boy. For over 40 years, he's raised the flag on the boathouse, which stands on his croquet lawn. He used to play with the steering wheel, too, until some vandals nicked it. Now, members of the Preservation Society have the Waverley to play with, and it's hoped she'll survive for many years to come. The following 12 months will be crucial. Her future will depend on public support, the subsidies of local authorities, the tourist board, and a lot of other imponderables. Can an amateur shipping company operate an efficient service, and so on? One thing is certain, no one wants her to fail, which is why today this grand old boat so deeply ingrained in the soul of the Clyde, is still chugging down the river. My name is Waverly, last battleship to sail the sea. There's only one of me, the good ship Waverly. My name is Waverly, last battleship to sail the sea. There's only one of me, the good ship I'm the good ship, Waverly. I'm the good ship, 